Good morning to the Twin Sioux, Algoma, and Chippewa. Thank you very much for joining us this morning here on Special Report for Friday, September the 18th. Yeah, I got the day right. <laughs> and Friday, too. Awesome. Yes, End don't of the forget week. the Friday. Yes. Yes. Wow, we got a lot of stuff to get to today. Uh, before we do, do anything exciting yesterday? No, not really. Uh, I had to work last night, and it was cold overnight. Like, uh... Certain areas there were some frost patches. But yeah, one uh, degree out. In it was one degree when I got when I went to my car this morning. Yeah, uh, did you, you didn't have to scrape nice. anything though, did you? No, but uh, it was very close. Oh, okay. Yeah, it yeah. was. Uh, I was like, mm, it's nah. it's gonna yeah. get like that again tonight, and then we're gonna slowly creep up. Yeah, so that's, that's the good, good news. Because uh, apparently in a couple of days we're gonna be like eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, it'll be yeah. right back up. You yes. can bring out all the shorts again. And yeah, sure. Right after the I just washed them all and put them away. Now yeah. I can use them again. Go to the beach. Yep. Okay, well, I guess, yeah, I'm not sure that's beach weather. Um, <laughs> we'll see what, maybe it is for people Juliana who are native says, to right? the zoo, but not uh, <laughs> people who have moved here from elsewhere. Speaking of that, yeah. uh, my girlfriend and I moved here from Miami one year ago yesterday. Oh, wow. congratulations, already yeah. a year. Oh. Yeah, a whole year now here in the zoo. Uh, like it. It's been good. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, that was our... Uh, when we first moved here, we were in Airbnb for two weeks, and then we got the apartment where we are now, mm -hmm. uh, basically at the beginning of October a right. year ago. So, yeah, but it's been uh, a full one year in the suit. And then you're almost a year here. You're creeping up on that already. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, be, Is it beginning of January? Yeah, yeah. So I'm about uh, almost nine months through now, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a fun ride. Lots of uh, different things have happened since I got here. Yeah. So that's, yeah, uh, it's, it's been a very interesting year, you know, to, to say the least amongst everything going on, right? Yeah. All the changes and whatnot. But there's yeah. good things coming next month, you know, Colette mm -hmm. coming back. So Yes, Colette Linden, uh, the uh, other morning show host who uh, Dan has been filling in for. Mm -hmm. Uh, she burned her both her hands and was in the hospital. She's now out of the hospital doing the hand therapy. They had to do some skin grafting and some other uh, things to fix her hands and so on. But uh, her recovery is going really good. She was here the other day. We got mm -hmm. some promo pics actually up on Facebook if you want to go check them out for the new morning show that will be starting on October the 5th. Uh, that show will be Dan, myself, and Colette. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, we're uh, pretty excited. We got a new studio all set up for that. We got a new uh, area set up for doing in-depth interviews. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, yeah, we're, we've done a lot here behind the scenes in the last uh, basically about four to six weeks. All new graphics, everything. So yeah, we're getting really excited for that. Plus, there'll be some more stuff coming as well uh, after we after we begin on October the fifth. There'll be some other things that we'll be adding in over the next month or two as well. There. Uh, and uh, we'll be doing uh, all of our stories will be in print on Sue Online and My Algoma, as well as video that you can watch on YouTube, Facebook, or you can watch us here live on, on TV, or you can watch this show repeated as well, as well as you will also be able to hear it in audio. So right. very shortly, you will be able to go to your Amazon Alexa and say, Amazon Alexa, play Sue Online News. And poof, and there we are. There we are. You're listening your right car, there. You, you can know. listen to us right on your Amazon Alexa, Google Home. You can also you'll be able to listen right through the website. Just click a button, mm -hmm. uh, and you'll be able to listen right through the website as well. Plus, it'll be on the, all on the major podcasting platforms as well. So, some exciting stuff coming up. Um, Absolutely, and some more announcements on the way. So, stay tuned for that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yesterday, one of our uh, new reporters here, Mike McDonald, mm -hmm. uh, he had an interview uh, with the Sault Ste. Marie mayor uh, on the Michigan side, Don Gary. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was a very interesting interview because obviously, uh, you know, this is known as the Twin Sioux. Uh, they were basically one city until the Americans and the British sat down and basically decided to use the river as a place to, uh, to, separate. to separate the border here, right. uh, not really realizing that it was basically one city here, but hey, they didn't have the internet back then, so <laughs> you can't fault them too much for just looking at a map. Yeah, I mean, like it was, just, uh, yeah, make it, a line it was an easy line to draw. Yeah. You know, right through the river. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have, right now are actually separated again from the American side because only essential workers uh, can go back and forth on the bridge, mm -hmm. which means that 
people from the American side can't come over here, and people here on the Canadian side can't go over to the American side. That's right. Now, a lot of Canadians go to the other side, to go to the restaurants, do some shopping, things like Support that. Support each other's economies. Exactly. And on the American side, they come over here for all kinds of things, including hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our other new reporters, Dan Gray, who just started this past week, he has been one, we've seen a bunch of fire stuff and police accidents and stuff. He's been in those, a bunch of other stories as well. Uh, but he's doing a story on hunting lodges and how they're hurting because they don't have those yes. Americans coming over yeah. uh, for hunting season and coming over for fishing and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. So it is, um, it's hurt obviously the economy on both sides of the border. I mean, plus you have higher unemployment as well. Yes. So anyways, he, uh, he says that uh, the Sioux could actually be a model for doing a regional reopening of the borders. Obviously, he'd like to see the border open sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, in the interview with Mike McDonald, our relationship is unique and our twin Sioux are the model for what an international border relationship should be. I am confident that our communities can be the role model for the rest of the border communities and show that we take personal responsibilities for ourselves and others. Now, the other issue here is not just economic, but there's also the fact that a lot of people are connected to someone on the other side of the border. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a relationship, close friend, Absolutely. they take Family, care of someone, yeah. and they're not able to go back and forth. And it's even you know separated families where they're at family on one side, family on this side. I was yes. talking with someone just yesterday who has family on the American side and they haven't seen them since back in February. Yes. Uh, so it, it does affect not only the economic impact of both cities, but also there's a social impact as well. And he, he uh, emphasized that as well in the interview. So. Yeah, and unfortunately, the two sides aren't in agreement. Our mayor doesn't think the border should open. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, they're at odds there. But, you yeah. know, it, to each their own, uh, each side views it differently, right? Well, so. I, I think the reason why Provenzano is against is I don't think he really wants to go against what the federal government is saying. Yeah, uh, especially when we're asking for money from yeah. the federal government yeah, to help exactly. us out. Uh, yeah. You might want to support them. Yeah, you... and, and there's locally, if you watch, like when any, whenever we post anything on the border, there's always people who are like, close it, keep it closed, yeah. keep it closed, keep it closed. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's yeah, probably yeah. like 80 20 split on yeah, the border the, the closed. Pe open. These people want it closed till 2050 at this rate. <laughs> um, did we mention only, we're only, 2050? only 2050? Only 2050. Did we mention where Doug Ford is today? Uh, not yet. Okay, okay. Because uh, he hasn't told us. He hasn't told us yet. Yeah. But we have news about Ross Romano, uh, our member of provincial parliament. His office is reopening. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in March, many businesses and offices were required to close and help flatten the curve. It's because of all of the hard work that we've been able to reopen our economy once again. So his constituency office had remained partly staffed during the pandemic. Well, well, we have been answering your calls and doing our best to help resolve issues, to provide updates about COVID-19, deliver information on provincial programs and services. I am pleased to let you all know that we are now fully reopening our office to constituents with some safety measures put in place to help protect the health and safety of visitors and staff. So if you want to read more about those changes, you can go to sueonline.com. All our stories are there that we present to you here on the show. Yes, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Yes, Ross Romano's office reopening, that's that's, uh, that's quite good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it does show, like, um, you can open stuff. I'm sure that, you know, MPP offices in Toronto are staying pretty close. But, yes. you know, yeah. just like the Sioux mayor was saying on the, the Sioux Michigan mayor was saying, you know, like, there can be regional reopenings. And, and Ross Romano's office is basically reopening. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's social distancing, wear a mask, yeah, those you the know, make the place. appointment before yeah. you go. But it does show that you can start to re open things regionally as that's, well. That's and right. It's important that we try and get back to some sort of normalcy as well. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. Particularly considering we have no active cases that we know of in, in all of the Algoma District, which is amazing when you think that it's 700 kilometers wide and mm -hmm. not a single case that we know of, which is, and all our schools, no, yeah. no one in the school system here has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I was talking with the father yesterday mm -hmm. uh, about sending his kids to school and stuff on another story that we're working on, uh, which we'll have next week, because mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of different politicians getting back to me as well on that one. Yes. Uh, but uh, speaking of Sioux, Michigan, uh, big honor for Lake Spears State University again. Uh, they've been recognized by U.S. News and World Report as one of the best higher education institutions in the Midwest. They are the 46th best regional college and also their third in top public schools for the regional Midwest area. And their engineering program is ranked 157 out of 220 in the entire country. Uh, the president of Lake Spirit State University, Dr. Rodney Hanley said, these findings further validate 
part of our mission to equip graduates with the knowledge, practical skills, and inner strength to craft a life of meaningful employment and personal fulfillment while enhancing the quality of life in the Great Lakes region and larger world. Congratulations to Lake Superior State for that fantastic um, oh, yeah. recognitions in the rankings there. It's, Again, it's great to Lakes, see a local institution. Lake State doing continues well. to do very well over there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so we are looking at a frosty morning pretty much throughout all of our region this morning. Once again, there was frost advisories issued for a good portion of the northern part of the province, and we are going to see some sun today. We're going to look at our live view now, which is sponsored by wirelesscom.ca. You can see there, we've got the pavilion, the sun is out, and we are gonna see that today, it will continue. We aren't gonna see it get too warm though. I'll have those details coming up, as well as your three day forecast and your regional temperatures. And what our weather is brought to you by Northern Lights Detailing at 632 Great Northern Road. So stay tuned, we will be right back after this short break. Every three seconds, someone will develop Alzheimer's, a fatal disease that steals your memories and makes you forget the people you love most. Fortunately, there is hope. Today, researchers believe a cure is just a few years away. It's okay, Daddy, you can go. Just go. For just $9 a month, you can fund research for a cure and make history by ending this disease. message from the government of Canada. It's been a while since I've seen Joe. We were a couple of pranksters, and Joe is always full of surprises. But today, he's the one in for a surprise. The thing is, Joe doesn't live here anymore. For people living with dementia, getting lost can happen unexpectedly. Are you ready to help? Help people living with dementia live safely in our communities. Contact your local Alzheimer's Society and visit FindingYourWayOntario.ca. And welcome back to Special Report on your Friday, September the 18th. Good morning to everybody. I want to thank our sponsors once again, Northern Lights Detailing at 632 Great Northern Road for sponsoring our weather and wirelesscom.ca for the camera and KC Security for the show. And before I forget, I'm going to make sure I open this up properly and read it so we can get it right. Northern Lights Detailing has a referral program. So every repeat visit, you get $5 off. And every person that you send to them and they complete their service or booking through them, you also get $5 off. And you can also use that as you go or you can bank it. So, you know, if you go there three, four, five times, you know, there's $25, right, that you can use towards a service. So make sure you do that when you go to Northern Lights Detailing. All right, so there's the radar here. We don't have the fronts up at the moment, but there isn't a whole lot going on. There's a bit of cloud cover here, but that's not going to make too much of a difference. We may see a little bit of a shower squeak through tomorrow, but there is not, there's about a 30% chance. So it's not really a Big factor at this point. Other than that, we have high pressure around us. As you can see down here, lots of activity down there from the tropical storms and the hurricanes in the uh, New Jersey region there. Okay, so we are going to see for our expected highs today. Thunder Bay, you're looking at a high of 14. 
10 in Wawa, only 8 in Timmins, a little bit cool up there, 12 here in Sault Ste. Marie as well as in Elliott Lake, and then 10 degrees in Sudbury. And those overnight lows are, again, pretty cool tonight. We will most likely see more frost advisories. Uh, 4 in Thunder Bay, 2 in Wawa, minus 2 in Timmins, 2 here in Sault Ste. Marie, and 1's in Elliott Lake and Sudbury. So do keep that in mind tomorrow if you got to go out early in the morning that you may have to defog your car, maybe scrape it depending on where you are. Currently we are sitting at 3 degrees, the sun is out, we are going to get up to a high of 12 today. The UV index is about 5 and the winds are 13 kilometers from the northwest. It's going to feel like 10 with the breeze and then overnight we're going to see a few clouds move in with a low of 2 and a chance of some patchy frost. Then moving on to Saturday. We are going to see increasing cloudiness early in the morning. There is that 30% chance of a shower I mentioned in the late morning, early afternoon. We will see a high of 14 and then we will see cloudy periods overnight with a low of 7. Sunday is nice and sunny, 18 degrees and then 10 overnight. Not much going on there but as you can see those temperatures are creeping up in the uh, both the daytime and nighttime. 19 is your high on Monday with a mix of sun and cloud and only down to 11 on Monday night. So we are seeing the trend go up once again and you will see that continue into the seven day. We are looking like we are gonna get above seasonal for quite a bit next week. I'll have that as well as the weather watcher coming up and we wanna tell you to go to sueonline.com. You can see every story that we present to you here on the show as well as the weather and you'll find all the links where you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch everything on demand. So if you missed a show from, I don't know, six months ago and you want to watch it, it's all there. So we will be back with more local news coming up right after this break. Stay tuned. It's easier to say nothing than blend in. But I need to speak up for what I know is right. I have a voice. I can lead the way. will be a light in my community. or if the buses are running or schools canceled. And as a mother of two, local news means the world to me. That's why I'm privileged to work at On TV and come every day and provide you with the most news. Welcome back to Special Report for Friday, September the 18th. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you to Casey Securities for sponsoring the show. Thank you to Northern Lights for sponsoring the weather. And also to Wireless.com for sponsoring those beautiful pictures we get of the downtown of Sault Ste. Marie here. Mm -hmm. Good morning to Joe Witt and also good morning to the owner of uh, Northern Lights Detailing, Marnie. Thank you very much for saying good morning there in our Facebook chat. 
If you want to interact with us when we're live on the air, you can. Just go to Facebook, the Sue Online page there. Click on the mm -hmm. video you'll see at the top of the page. And it will take you to another screen and you'll be able to watch the show through Facebook. And also there's a comment section there where you can say good morning, let us know about birthdays and anniversaries and things like yeah, that. Absolutely. And we can mention it to you live on the air. Okay, exciting news. The OHL has actually come out with the actual for dates that they need to for a season. So it looks like they're going to progress and start actually getting to the point. They've said that they want to start the season December 1st. December 1st, that's right. December 1st is still that target date for the beginning of the season, but they did announce some of the other stuff that they've been working on because obviously that's less than three months away. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've obviously been working with different levels of government and the health agencies because obviously there is cross-border teams in Michigan and also down in Pennsylvania. That's right. Uh, so they're having to figure out, okay, how can we do this without making them quarantine for 14 days and so on. But they did announce some of their key dates. So the training camps are going to start on Sunday, November the 15th. And they will have exhibition play. Uh, so for their exhibition games, will be the weekends of the November 22nd, sorry, 20th to 22nd, and then also the 27th to the 29th of November. The regular season will then start on December 1st. That was the only date we had that was previously announced. And the regular season will end on April 29th. Mm -hmm. They will do the Ross Robertson Cup. Uh, it will be done on June 14th at the latest. That's the playoffs for the OHL because the Memorial Cup starts on June 17th, and that will either be hosted by the Oshawa Generals or the Sioux Greyhounds. Mm -hmm. So it could be here in town that you can actually see the Grey Cup. Wouldn't it be awesome if the Greyhounds can make it all the way to the Grey Cup? Sorry, not Grey no, Cup. Memorial, Memorial Cup. Cup. I, was Cup. Say, Cup I keep football, getting, uh, yeah, right? I'm not really a big sports person. Yeah, all the Canadian sports are kind of blurry to yeah, me. They all just, um, yeah. So, yeah, Memorial Cup. Um, if they want to go play for the Grey Cup, too, they can, because CFL's not playing for it, so why, why can't the Greyhounds play for it this year? Well, exactly. Yeah. Right? Exactly. It's, it's up for grabs. None of the football teams are playing for it. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. But other we, local hockey news, a different yeah. league, but still here in town. We got some news with the Sioux Thunderbirds. They have acquired. Uh, Dukewitz, if I'm saying that right, from the Timberwolves. That's why I gave you the story. Yeah. I wasn't sure how to pronounce it. I know. Yeah. I, I, was looking at the, I was looking at that name since the beginning <laughs> of the show. Like, how am I going to say this? <laughs> <laughs> the Sioux Thunderbirds have announced today that they've added a blue liner to their 2021 roster. Uh, the club has acquired 2001 birth year defenseman Cameron Dukewitz from the CCHL 2's Renfrew Timberwolves in exchange for a player development fee. Duquitz, mm -hmm. who stands 6'0 and weighs 191 pounds, scored four times and set up 11 others in 40 games last season with the Timberwolves. So, awesome there. There we go. Speaking Some of hockey, the Thunderbirds. Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. It's now going to be between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Dallas Stars. Last night, the Lightning beat the New York Islanders by a score of 2-1. to one. They won the series 4-2. Mm -hmm. So they will be now playing against the Dallas Stars for the Stanley Cup. And the, the Grey Cup is still available too if you know, if the Islanders want to compete for something, the Greyhounds or something, but yeah. And then we, Good luck to both those teams for the NHL, win the Stanley Cup. Nice to see that we're actually getting in one sport to the end where they're actually getting close to winning an actual trophy since no sports team has really been raising any trophies lately. I know, I know. So nice to see. Oh, and football last night. Football started season. Uh, started the season. We're now in week two. Mm -hmm. Bengals and the Browns playing last night in Thursday night football. And they won. The Browns won 35 to 30 over the Bengals. So <laughs> nice to see some football happening again. And yes, we got MLB and news, and I'm just giggling yeah, if because you're a Chase Yankees. fan or Tigers fan, you can just stop listening now. <laughs> <laughs> Yankees again, double digits. <laughs> 10-7 over the Blue Jays last oh, night. Oh my goodness, they're racking oh, up the RBIs and runs on that team against they're the just, Jays. They're just killing them. And then Cleveland also 10-3 over the Detroit Tigers. Um, you know, like I said yesterday, yeah. the Detroit teams just, you know, I'm a Red Wings fan. Yeah. And I don't yeah. feel bad because all the other teams are doing just as bad. You know, the Tigers and the Lions. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but well, maybe we'll have better news on Monday for your sports teams. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be right back after the break with the seven-day weather forecast. December 21st, they're going to sacrifice a young girl. Escape through a narrow underground high tension electrical tunnel.
Canada United is a movement to show local businesses some love. Right now, they could use our support more than ever. So we're asking Canadians to buy local and spread the word. And every time you watch our videos or like our posts, we'll contribute five cents to small business relief, starting with this video. So keep watching and tell your friends, because buying local can make a big impact. And small actions can too. Canada United, together we can make a difference. At Maitland Ford Lincoln, we see our trucks everywhere. We see them on Queen Street, Lake Street, North Street, Bay Street, Second Line, Third Line, Fourth Line, Pine Street, Great Northern People's Road, Wellington, Cora Road, Bruce Street, Carmen's Way, Northern Ave, Trunk Road. Folks come from all over Algoma District and beyond to buy their truck at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Amazing prices, outstanding service. King Street, Shannon Road, Goulet Bay, Black Road, Everman Road, and even on Pine Shores. Yep, our trucks are everywhere. Get yours at Maitland Ford Lincoln, built for Northern Life, on Great Northern Road, just north of the hospital. What's life without making a few mistakes down the road? A few sharp turns, and doing things for what we adore, but might regret later. A trip to Chuck's Roadhouse isn't one of them. With melt-in-your-mouth AAA steaks, buttery lobster tail, half-priced apps after 9 p.m., an ice-cold draft with all your Roadhouse favorites. Chuck's Roadhouse. Food the way it ought to be. Priced the way it used to be. And welcome oh. back to Special Report, and thank you for producer Mike talking in our ears. <laughs> yes, so that we all now we had three people simultaneously welcoming welcoming you back, and yes. you only heard and you only heard two of them. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, um, well, we could have done that, right? Where we just said, "I know." Back we could have just we were gonna do the we're gonna do the weather in unison here, and then Mike totally <laughs> messed it up in our earpieces. Boy. All right. So we're gonna look at the seven day forecast. <laughs> Well, we got the sun and some clouds on Saturday with that 30% chance of a shower. Then we will see sun for three days, getting up to 21 degrees by Tuesday, and then up to 22 on Wednesday with a mix of sun and clouds, back down to 18 on Friday. So we're above seasonal for the majority of next week. Uh, overnight lows, 7 degrees tomorrow night and Saturday, but those will creep up to 13 by next Thursday, and they will stay in double digits. So... That's some good news there. We are above, and uh, your sunrise is at uh, was at 7:19 Eastern, and will sunset will sun will set rather at 19:43 or 7:43 p.m. I'm used to 24-hour that's, uh, that's, clock. That's quite a yeah. tongue twister there. Yeah. So the, that's your uh, sunset. It's getting shorter. And so I want to mention how we always mention Northern Lights Detailing is our sponsor for the weather at 632 Great Northern Road. And you all know KC Security sponsors the show. So we had one of our vehicles there yesterday in for a cleaning and it uh, our charger there. So it is nice and shiny now, cleaned all inside and out. So all three of the vehicles have been done this summer. And so what a great job there and thank you again to Northern Lights. So just remember that you can go and see them and you can refer people and you can bank up those five dollars every time and then you can uh, you know you can get free car washes that way. So um, also for the weather watchers send in your weather watcher photos to ontvweather at gmail.com include your name and location it goes up on sueonline.com as well as our facebook and twitter and i have two scheduled for the weekend as well so we're gonna have them right through seven days a week on sue online awesome so come back and check those out at sue online each day they mm -hmm. will be up around 6 a.m mm -hmm. uh so it's a nice way to start the day absolutely Get to see some wonderful pictures from all over uh our region so yes. that's good uh we now know that doug ford will be doing a press conference today it'll be slightly different than normal it's going to be in ottawa uh, ahead of the throne speech that's coming up on mm -hmm. September 23rd. It's creeping up. Uh, Doug Ford will be joined by the correct Quebec Premier Francois Legault, as well as Manitoba Premier Brian Pallister and Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. They're going to hold a joint news conference. Uh, obviously, they're looking for particularly a lot of help with yes. uh, both the healthcare system and then uh, just PPE in general, because mm -hmm. uh, those numbers are really creeping up with how much extra cost there is in the healthcare system and just in general as well. Yeah, uh, And the, the cases in Ontario did dip below 300 again yesterday. We had 293 cases, but 85 of them were in Toronto, 63 in Peel, 39 in Ottawa. All three of those areas had uh, some restrictions put in on them yesterday. 10 people inside, 25 outside. 
so they have less ga gatherings. Uh, but 70% of all of the cases were people under the age of 40. We'll see you back here at 1 o'clock for Doug Ford's press conference. Have a fantastic morning. Take care.